Okay, today we're going to be working on the General Motors CS144 uh, alternator, uh, first manufactured by Delco Remy and Delphi Automotive Systems. This one comes off of a uh, 96 Chevy Camaro 350 motor. And uh, what we want to do, we'll be going inside the alternator and replacing the voltage regulator, which is where you plug it into, and the bridge rectifier, which is the thinned part. Uh, we'll be going through and replacing all these items. The first thing that you want to do is mark the alternator, maybe with a dot. I put a couple, a couple dots on here, a dot here and a dot here, uh, so you can tell the orientation of the rear housing to the front housing. This housing has four different holes in it, so the rear housing can be rotated in four different positions. And so we want to make sure that it goes back together in the exact correct position. The first step is to remove the four through bolts. And that's what we're going to do. First, we're going to crack them loose. Now, this alternator I haven't even opened up or worked on at all. And then I'm going to use a speed wrench here to knock these things out of here. I put down a little paper towel because this can be a real messy job at times. Depends on how dirty your alternator is. Okay. Let's pull those four through holes out of there. And then, once you do that, then you can take the two halves apart. Now, initially, you have to pay close attention. The center dark part, this is called the stator. That's the field winding, the outer field winding. That field winding stays with the rear case, and you'll see once we take it apart. And all you have to do is give a little tap on the front case, and that breaks the front case away from there. And we can just pull it, and it comes right apart. Now, we've broken it into the, the rear case and the front case. And we'll set the front end apart with a rotor assembly. We're working on that later. We're going to focus here on the rear case. Now we have the rear case with the stator in it. And if we look down inside, uh, we have the three connections where the stator connects to. We have the brush holder and the voltage regulator and the bridge rectifier. Uh, first thing we'll do is take the stator out. This takes 11 30 second socket. We just spin that, spin those nuts out of there. We have three of those. There we go. Give a tap on that case. And there you go. Now the stator is away from the rear assembly. And now we have, you can see it much better now, we have the thin bridge rectifier, we have the brush holder assembly, and we have the voltage regulator. Now here's why I want to make, make note with the CS144. The CS144 came in a late style and it came in an early style. The late, this is a late style right here. The reason I can tell is the battery post goes right through the housing right here and it's got this metal center here which is the the bearing. Uh, they went to a needle bearing which is a much better bearing. The early style CS144 used from about 86 to 90 depending on the vehicle. You can tell the difference because the rear case, the aluminum goes completely over the rear case. You won't see the center metal bearing and where the battery stud goes, that actually goes right here. It's a small square hole. The battery stu stud went through the case. There's not as much reinforcing on the early style as there is to the late style. So the late style is a much better unit. So, and there there is a difference also. I want to note there's a difference between the bridge rectifier between the two, and we'll go over to that. And now here we have all the components in here with the bridge rectifier. The first thing we need to do is just uh, take out all the screws that hold all these components in here. Now the upper portion of the bridge rectifier is grounded, so these are ground screws. These two upper screws would never be insulated because they're grounding the bridge rectifier. The bridge rectifier is a component that, that allows the AC current that comes from the stator goes into this bridge rectifier, then that bridge rectifier converts that AC current into DC current. The DC is broken into two halves, the negative half up here and the positive half which your battery pulse goes through. So the negative part, port is, part is very, very important. So we take these screws out of here, and that's the, that's the two ground screws for the bridge rectifier. Now we're going to take out the, this is on the positive portion of the bridge rectifier, so these, these screws uh, need to be insulated. So we'll take these out, and uh, there's, there's two insulated screws over here, two insulated screws over here, and we'll notice the first thing we do is this insulator 
This insulator is the longest of the insulator, and that goes through here on this right side of the bridge rectifier is a longer one. I'll show you these shorter ones when we take them out. Next one is to take out the screw going through the voltage regulator. And this is another insulated screw, and there's something to note in here. And now we'll notice this is a short one with a short insulator going through the voltage regulator. So you have to make sure you get the long one going through the bridge rectifier and the short one going through the voltage regulator. Now I'll continue to take the brush holder assembly out and keep track of your springs as your springs pop out. You want to know where those go if you're going to use them over again or if you're going to be doing a complete. Now this one we're going to use these brushes over again because you can see these brushes are very long. So this is going to be used over one. This is a situation where the bridge rectifier went bad. Uh, the bridge rectifier is the assembly with diodes in it that converts the AC current to DC current and it's the number one component that goes bad in alternators. So this, this thing needs to be replaced commonly. Now we're able to take the voltage regulator and brush holder assembly out of the alternator and if you notice the the brush holder assembly plugs into the voltage regulator and there's also the stator lead that comes off of here. We'll set that aside. Now we have the, this is, this is called the uh, capacitor and, and now that I see this one coming out is, is broken so we have to be concerned about this. In, in that this goes in here and it jumps across the bridge rectifier and this supplies, this little rib supplies power to the voltage regulator. So we always have to, when we reassemble this, make sure that we get the insulated part of the bridge rectifier on the proper side of the voltage regulator so that it makes electrical contact. If you were to get this voltage regulator on the bottom side, we'd run out of pro we'd run into a problem. That has to be on this voltage regulator in the proper relation. Because on the back side of the capacitor is an insulator. That insulator has to be down and the voltage regulator has to be over the top of it. Um, We'll go over that more later. Now we're back to taking the uh, rest of the the, uh, the bridge rectifier out of the alternator. And uh, to do that, we have to get another little special wrench here and take the last two little screws out. And get those out. Now there's another note here. I want to note to you again, we have that other longer longer insulated screw that the two screws that go in on the left side of the bridge rectifier are shorter and the one that goes in the on the right side through the capacitor is longer so keep note of the different lengths of those screws that's very important now after that we're able to take the bridge rectifier out and on this one you'll notice the uh, the battery stud goes right through the bridge rectifier and uh, I should be able to show you now the difference between the early style and late style bridge rectifier. What I'm replacing this rectifier, this burned up rectifier, is with a heavy duty uh, press foot diode transpo bridge rectifier. The diodes in this bridge rectifier are much more heavy duty, have a higher amperage and voltage rating than the diodes in this bridge rectifier. Now I also have a sample of the of the early style. Here's the early style bridge rectifier and you can notice the difference. The late style has these two additional holes over here and and what that was is the early style had a battery stud that went through the alternator and clamped together this one has the battery stud that goes directly in there so between the early style and late style you want to notice the difference between the two bridge rectifiers now now we're just about ready to do this what we have to do is finish taking apart the um, bridge rectifier we have to get this uh, battery stud out of here and to do that, we're going to use an impact wrench. Okay, we've taken that apart, and now we slide that battery stud out of there. And now we'll set that bridge rectifier aside. We have to now install the battery stud into the new bridge rectifier. And we just do the same procedure. We're going to use an impact here, and we're going to reverse the, put that back on. Well, I don't know. Zap it a few.